Hello and welcome and on this video I will be discussing my favourite albums on the ECM jazz label. Well, is ECM a jazz label? ECM is a, a record label which like Blue Note has a very signature sound, signature production style and a signature sort of album artwork style. Um, ECM has a definite vibe about it. It was set up by Manfred Eicher in the, I think 1970. Uh, you know, you have to check that up. That's, that's off the top of my head. But I think it was in 1970. And I, it's a European label, primarily covering jazz, uh, improvised music, and a little bit of sort of modern classical music as well. Um, the ECM label offered the sort of technology and production values that you associate with classical music for sort of jazz ensembles. It's got a very particular style. Sometimes they they move away from it, but um, on the whole, you, there's an expectation that the recording quality is going to be absolutely immaculate, um, beautifully recorded, but very much a photograph of what you're hearing. You know, they don't put out sort of loads of dance music and overlaid you know, sort of steely down overdub music, you know, I'm sure they do a bit of overdubbing here, but it's often sort of in situ um, live recording, recorded absolutely beautifully. Um, the album art artwork is fantastic. I've got a book of just the album artwork, but again, a very signature minimal style. Um, they've had a few artists on there that have sold millions off the top of my head, I would say. Keith Jarrett, especially the Colm concert, which I think sold over a million copies, and some of the early Pat Metheny albums. And I think they use that money, really put it back, and they've really been able to support some really um, avant-garde and experimental releases. So it's allowed musicians to do things that they wouldn't be able to do on a normal record label. And what they're famous for is, is sort of solo and duo albums, you know, um, one of the first guys to do that, I think, was Chick Corea in 1971. He signed and he did the piano improvisation albums. And then Chick, um, Keith Jarrett recorded his solo piano albums, completely improvised. And surprisingly, they sold a lot. And this allowed them to, to offer something to musicians which other labels can't, which is a sort of solo platform uh, and an, an ability to put really interesting mixtures of musicians together. All right, so obviously being a record label, there's thousands and thousands of releases. There's no way I can even begin to have an overview of those albums or even some of the seminal artists on it. I've tried my best to pull out 10 of my favorite albums that do cover all the different areas, but this is, and I'm not ranking it, this is just the albums that I went through my record collection and went, oh, I love that and I love that, well, oh, I love that and I did that till I got 10 albums. So let's see what we picked out here. And I'm going to go through the CDs first. So the first album I want to discuss is this. The Third Decade by Art Ensemble of Chicago. So I pulled this out because there's a lot of free jazz on um, the ECM label. A lot of experimental and free jazz. And they offer a platform to those artists. So I think people like Don Cherry come to mind, you know, um, Ed Blackwell. Um, I really like free jazz. And to be able to hear where in free jazz you see um they not necessarily work to compositions they're working to sound in a lot of cases if you've got a duo album that's just free improvised the work's gone into trying to work out how these two sounds are going to work together you know say you've got an album of soprano sax and drums how do they mesh together how do you tune stuff how do you play how do you open up space for things to happen and of course ecm's recording process being so immaculate you really hear things which may be on some of the 60s free jazz albums that aren't so well recorded it's hard to really understand what they were trying to do um the art ensemble of chicago are one of the classic um free jazz groups um and i really wanted to represent them this album which i think was made in in, in the 1980s um is is a is a little bit more accessible than some of the earlier art ensembles because this is a pretty experimental album and it's a good place to start you know um with that it really shows what ecm do and it really shows that sort of uh, american free improvisation style which they covered a lot of those artists so yeah that's that's an album that is well, well worth checking out um there's a whole ton of solo albums here 
Um, Keith Jarrett's the main guy. You know, it, there's so many solo, um, there's so many solo piano albums by Keith Jarrett. I nearly had to put two Keith Jarrett albums in here. Um, when I was growing up, I got an album called Invocation slash Moth of the Flame. It was actually two albums put together. And I nearly put this in the list because it's one of my favorite albums, but I'd already picked a, um, a Keith Jarrett album out, which you'll get to in a minute. Um, that album was a, a whole CD of improvised um, piano, but the first disc was an in, a whole album of improvised church organ music by Keith Jarrett. Utterly incredible. I mean, what other label would put that out, you know? And it's just another world of music. It was so influential on me that, you know, it really should have been in this list, but there's another album by Keith Jarrett that's even more influential, so I had to, I had to put that in, and I didn't want to get you know, because I'd end up putting all the Jarrett albums and all the Pat Metheny albums in. So another uh, musician that I absolutely love on ECM is the guitarist Ralph Towner. Ralph Towner was in a, a sort of American folk jazz fusion band called Oregon, and they're absolutely incredible. You really need to check them out. I love them, and I love um, Ralph Towner's playing. Uh, it's such a unique approach you know, Ralph Tan also plays piano and sort of classical uh, classical uh, guitar, and he plays sort of um, twelve string guitar sometimes. And there's whole solo improvised albums on twelve string guitar by Ralph Tan. They're absolutely incredible. We really need to hear them. Um, an album he's done more recently that I really do like, and sort of goes between the improvised and the composed is Anna. There it is. That's a great album. A little bit more accessible. You know, quite short tracks, you're not having to trawl through a track that's like 15 minutes of improvis improvisation. And so um, Ralph Town is absolutely fantastic. If you like that acoustic guitar sort of approach, another guitarist that you should check out on ECM is Egberto Gismonte. I haven't got any of his stuff here, but really incredible. His piano playing as well. So many artists that you need to get through. Right. Um, when I was going through this, I wanted to pull out the more fusion end and, and there's not a ton of fusion on ECM um, but when they do it because the production values are so high it's heavy right whether this is a fusion album I'm not too sure but I, I, I would say it is it's the Dave Holland quartet extensions which features Dave Holland has got Steve Coleman um, Steve Coleman's the guy that invented M bass I will do a video on M bass at some point we need to if you're a jazz fusion fan you need to know about M bass um, it's got Kevin U Eubanks on guitar haven't mentioned him before one of the great uh, more modern jazz and jazz fusion guitarists really interesting style he's fantastic and then Marvin Smitty Smith drums he's just a phenomenal drum virtuoso this is I would say somewhere between three swinging jazz, straight no changes jazz, and fusion with sort of an um, odd time signature influence, a little bit of an M bass influence. If you don't know what the M bass style is, we'll look into that in the future, so keep your eye out for that video. But it, this is one of the great modern jazz albums, one of the great sort of fusion albums, but it's just on the edge of fusion. It's much more sort of free swinging uh, improvised jazz. But, um, Dave Allen's absolute genius, you know, one, one of the great British jazz musicians and uh, he's made a ton of absolutely fantastic albums. Right, this is another fusion album for you. Um, Tehei Ripdal, right? He's an electric guitarist. Um, he makes psychedelic, spacey jazz rock fusion. Really hard to put him in a pigeonhole. Um, really spacey, really trippy, somewhere, somewhere between, my God, it's sort of psychedelic prog and free jazz with a rock influence in there. You know, if you're into fusion and you haven't checked this guy out, then go and check it out. Um, the 70s stuff's absolutely fantastic. If you want an introduction to the 70s stuff, just go and buy the EC al album Works. It really covers that. But this album here, which is called If Mountains Can Sing, is, is really incredible. It's sort of got sort of string quartet stuff on here, right through to some really intense sort of jazz improvised stuff. Um, quite, quite groovy in places, you know, there's a rock influence in there. It's an absolutely fantastic album. 
Here's a track on here called One for the Road Runner. And now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe that should have made my top 10 guitar solos of all time. Maybe it should. To Hey Ripdal. Absolute master. Um, I'm actually going to go to this guy next before we carry on. Where, where are we? Before I, I, I'm going to pull out this album. So I'm about to show you one of the most important fusion albums of all time in the top 10. Pat Metheny, Bright Size Life. And this re represents all the Pat Metheny albums on ECM. There's so many incredible albums there. Um, Pat Metheny, Jacko Pass, Joyce and Bob Moses. One of the great fusion albums. I mean, what can I say? Uh, it, and, and after Weather Report and the Mavish doing Return Forever, Pat Metheny comes out with this and he really changes the nature of jazz fusion. He creates a, a different world which people like John Schofield and Bill Frazella are going to walk into. Um, this album uh, features one of Jaco Pastoris's greatest performances. Um, Pat Metheny, I will no doubt do a video on Pat Metheny. He's, he's one of the top jazz fusion guys ever. This is one of the great albums. You know, um, Pat Metheny brings in a certain sound. But this album here I'm about to show you, here, Eb, Eberhard Weber, Fluid Russell. This is a really monumental album. And I think some of the things that Pat Metheny went on to do, if you like that, that sort of really highly orchestrated, almost like classical chamber jazz stroke fusion, um, with, a, with, a, with hints of Steve Reich minimalism on there, that is really brilliantly done on this album. This is really one of my favorite albums ever. The lineup is incredible. It's basically two singers, Bonnie Herman and Norma Winston, Gary Burton on vibraphone um, and marimba. And Gary Burton's another um, ECM musician. Of course, Gary Burton, before he was on ECM, was an absolute pioneer of jazz fusion. Um, and his, 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 his stuff with Larry Coriel is, is absolutely legendary. It's the beginnings of jazz fusion. Um, then he has the band with Pat Metheny and um, uh, Mick Goodrick is on guitar and that's a pioneering jazz fusion band as well. So I really wanted to represent Gary Burton somewhere. Incredible musician. He's represented here as well many times. Um, Bill Frizzell on guitar. He's another one of the great modern jazz fusion guitarists with his own signature sound. More of him later. And of course, Eberhard Weber on bass. So we basically got a whole album of two singers, vibraphone, guitar and bass, no drums. And you'd think, how are they gonna be able to maintain that over a whole album? What you actually get is just incredible composition. You know, the first track is 17 minutes long. It's, it's like a prog rock masterpiece. Um, really rem reminiscent of Stuff that Pat Metheny would do later, but, but really honed down. Um, the composition is incredible. The use of the two voices is absolutely incredible. I, I'm, I'm giving you some albums you need to check out. If you haven't checked this album out and you're a Fusion fan. Very delicate though. There's no drums on here, but this is an absolutely fantastic album. Right. Another one from Gary Burton. And of course, when we talked about him elsewhere, Chick Corea. Chick Corea reserved a lot of his more um, heavier, more out there, um, more intellectual, esoteric stuff for ECM. Uh, he teamed up to make this masterpiece. And this is one of these examples of a sort of ECM duo album. It's a whole album of just piano and vibraphone. It's an absolute masterpiece. It's, it's, it's so fantastic. If you haven't heard it, you go, go and check it out right now. Very beautiful, incredible. And this really is represented of the sort of ECM style album cover, very minimal. Is that, you know, so simple and works so well, you know, so Crystal Silence, check it out. Uh, another album from that era, which is why I couldn't put in two Key Sharrett albums. I, I, I couldn't bring myself to do that. Maybe I could have because it's, perhaps this is a Jan Garbrick album. Here's another ECM artist you need to check out, Jan Garbrick, who's got the most incredible, um, individual sound on alto sax. I had to check it's his, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's tenor and soprano sax, isn't it? Doesn't sound like a tenor or soprano sax, it just sounds like Jan Garbrick. He teams up here with um, 
Keith Jarrett to make. And this is a fusion album. There's rock beats on here, there's funk beats, there's also some really free playing on here. This is one of the greatest albums ever made. And again, look at that beautiful album cover, so simple. And it, it's got the classic um, ECM rhythm section of Pale Danielson and Jan Christensen. Pale on bass, Jan Christensen on drums. So, um, yeah, we wanna, I'm, I'm giving you some fusion masterpieces you've got to check out. Here's a fusion masterpiece. And if you want a modern jazz fusion masterpiece, and this is my ninth album, I'm going to give you this, Bass Desires by Mark Johnson, with two incredible guitarists on there, John Schofield and Bill Frizzell, with the wonderful Peter Erskine on drums. Uh, this is an amazing fusion album. Um, um, Frizzell's on um, guitar synthesizer as well as a guitar. He's really exploring sounds. I, I, I find Bill Frizzell, he's amazing all the way through his career. And he's gone off down a certain tangent, really exploring sort of um, country and western almost, and sort of the Beatles, and, and, and a sort of, he's honed his guitar sound. But back here, it's as though he hasn't quite honed that sound, and he's actually more experimental. And he acts as a brilliant foil to Schofield, who also does some of his best guitar playing. Mark Johnson, the leader, um, He's, uh, you know, fantastic bass player. I think I think he um, he he worked with. Did he work with Bill Evans, or was it? Um, I think he he may have worked with Sonny Rollins, but I I I'm might probably completely wrong there. Wonderful bass player, but he brings in a couple of um, brilliant compositions, um, Samurai Hee-Haw and Mojo Highway. Um, if you're a Schofield fan, you've got to check this out because it's a, one of the great Schofield albums, but again, nothing like a normal Schofield album. That's one of the great fusion albums there. Absolutely brilliant. I think they did a couple of these albums, but that's the one I love. Right, I'm going to finish up with my last, um, you know, ECN album. They've they've gone into areas into classical music. They and they're really interesting. They've gone really pushed the bounds of what you class as jazz. And this album's fascinated me for years. It's by El Shanker and it's called Who's to Know. All right. El Shanker um, is a, a Indian classical violinist that came to fame in Shakti with John McGoughlin. He then made an album with Frank Zappa called Touch Me There, which is one of the great Zappa albums I've talked about on my Zappa video. He made, he put a sort of rock band together called The Epidemics with Steve Vine guitar, a really interesting player. But he is an Indian classical violinist. So this, when you put it on, sounds like Indian classical music. It's, it's basically two ragas that's, that's um, so side one is called Ragam Tanam Pallavi, it's 22 minutes long, and side two is called Ananda Nadamadam Tiliai Sankara. And the lineup is a standard Indian classical group. Shankar on the violin and tambora, a guy called Siva Raman and on Mrindingam, which is a percussion instrument, Zakir Hussain on tabla, and then there's Lakshminaira, I can't even say this, why am I attempting this on video? Uh, it was um, keeping the time, because in Indian music you have to keep the very complex times. But that's the question is this Indian classical music or is this jazz? Right, so Indian classical music is improvised music and it's built upon um, ragas, which are modes. And um, it has very specific timings in there and you learn specific, specific phrases and it uses microtones. It's, very, it's a very complex system of creating music, which is improvised based, but is different to jazz. It has its similarities. And jazz musicians and um, uh, Indian classical musicians, they can communicate together. This is one of the things that John McGoughlin did was really study and understand how these can work together. But the track, the, the, the album title of this has always interested me. Who's to know? Is this an album of Indian classical music or is this a jazz album with a very strong Indian classical influence? Who's to know? And um, I really wanted to put in a sort of non-jazz album and I absolutely love this album. If you like Indian music, you must get it. And the reason to get it is because it is Indian classical music, but you know, 
he's playing an electric violin and he's playing a double violin which expands the limits of the instrument out and of course you get to hear Indian classical music recorded by ECM and this is always the thing it's absolutely beautiful beautifully recorded so I'm going to finish this video now on um, 10 of my favorite ECM albums I will be dipping in again there's another 10 sat there for me to get into you know but if you want to explore that and you wanted some ideas of albums to get I hope you helped you you know to do that and I'm, I hope you've also I pointed towards some classic fusion albums as well you know that we all us discerning fusion fans should get into and uh, of course you know I'm sure we're going to get a ton of comments in here albums I've never heard of you know so much I missed out uh, in doing this um, and of course if you like this like and subscribe again thanks for watching and listening I think so many people are getting the sort of spirit in which I do this which is just an excuse to talk about music and talk talk about these fantastic albums you know and, and find a place where we can you know discuss albums that probably don't get discussed in the mainstream uh, but so many musicians know and you know dot their hat to it so yes um, I'm really enjoying doing this. Thanks for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye.